I feel like that's the number one thing that happens during the call is there's some form of embarrassment or shame brought into that from the business owner's side. And they're afraid or like embarrassed to ask questions or to say, I haven't touched my books or I don't know what I'm doing. You're making gems or you're selling things on Shopify or you're writing, you know, for websites. You're probably not going to know everything there is to know about accounting and it's okay to own that and to ask. Welcome to the Coast Podcast. I'm Emily, a virtual assistant agency owner who left Amazon in 2019 to build my dream. And I'm Whitney, a freelance writer and communications consultant who never felt at home in a cube farm. We wanted to learn from people who paved their own ways like we did. So we created this podcast to talk to others who were brave enough to pick a different path. Creatives, entrepreneurs, people doing their careers and their lives their way. Join us as we make new friends, get inspired, and show you beautiful paths less travel. Not every road leads to the coast, but the ones that do come with a great view. Hello and welcome back to the coast. My name is Whitney Popa. I own a communications consultancy and a publishing house. And we are very excited about this redemption tour that Emily is about to introduce. My name is Emily Given, and I own a virtual assistant agency called She's a Given, and I'm also a virtual assistant coach. Today, we have the pleasure of talking to Erin Pohan again. We interviewed her early on in our journey, and she is the founder and visionary of Upkeeping Registered Trademark, which we will dive into. Um, oh, yeah. Aaron, <laughs> Aaron is changing the old and boring stereotypes about accounting and helping business owners truly understand their business finances. Through her customized bookkeeping subscription service, Aaron supports entrepreneurs and already established small business owners by being their number one financial cheerleader, concierge, and communicator. She holds an MS in accounting from Liberty University, a BS in accounting from the University of Maryland, and is a CPA candidate. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know those things. I didn't know either. Sparkle on. Like, tell us more. No, I have a whole nother paragraph. Yeah. (laughs) When she's not trying to make her accounting more fun, Erin loves traveling the world with her family, chauffeuring her two kids all over the city, boating around Lake Union, and convincing accounting students and professionals that owning a bookkeeping business is the American dream. She's also heartbreakingly a Cleveland Browns fan. (laughs) Okay, I do have one question before we uh, say hello again, Erin. You love chauffeuring your two kids all over the city? I I, I do. (laughs) And I'm being honest about it. I love it. Okay. And that's why I started my business. You need to be present. True, true. And you do have a big rig for that. I do. My big rig name is. I just don't like driving. I love being with my kids, but I don't like driving. I don't like different climates and being cold. I did. And I'm just thinking of being a soccer mom right now is why I'm just against it. And I did say redemption tour because Erin believed that she didn't do herself justice when she was high on painkillers last time we interviewed her even though when we listened to it back she did amazing so good this is i found it pretty sexy but i was (laughs) definitely slower than normal i was so (laughs) high on painkillers last time i just i think i was like nine days into having a broken elbow it was still broken pre-surgery yeah yeah we are wow Yeah. yeah so Tell us everything, and especially the scandalous part of your, if you would like to, about your registered trademark, yes, wherever you want I to love. begin. Yeah, I mean, we can start from where we were last time we spoke. I think I was just a year into upkeeping. Now we're three years in. We're a small team of three. I've got two other local moms to help me, and that's really exciting. We've grown. I think we now have 36 clients and about to onboard four more so wow rolling it's been really fun to step into like the leadership 
it really made into like the whole entrepreneurial world. We like, so many people coming. Oh my god, you guys get that. They have like a thriving community. It's really fun. Since Yeah, I mean, where, where do we go? We could talk about entrepreneurial journey. We could talk about trademark. <laughs> Let's talk about how your boss got so jealous of you, your former boss, that he tried to rip off the name of your company and trademark it himself, and then you ended up winning. Yeah, I mean, that's a hard one to like even know how to navigate, because part of me is like, I was so violated. The other part of me wants to prove my integrity. But a big part of me wants the space to just leave it, like, yeah. and not drag someone, no matter how poorly we can be. So, from my perspective of it, and if people are listening and they're like, well, what are you talking about? My main upkeeping was trademarked by someone else who I had previously worked with. And so, um, that was kind of one of the things that they did. And that is really, really hard and challenging. And you know, I spent a lot of time frustrated and upset being, being violated. That happened pretty early on in the fact when we talked last that was happening early on. But I worked with a trademark attorney in New York City. She was amazing. I actually met her through a networking community called Entrepreneur Solution. And we were able to just trust the process and know that I was in the right that whole time. And I think, what are we in April? Last month, we were able to successfully uh, win with my business to be back and it's mine. So, yeah, it's been so amazing to just have that win and also just like more so stand up for myself as a woman owned business. They don't. You can't treat people that way. There's also like, to your point, I, this is so major. And like what you said just really resonates. Before we started recording, I was talking about some of these like stories that I've told myself and I've been working through them as a person and in my business. Like I have this complex about like talking too much or like I can't, like you said, I don't want you're inherently kind of a people pleaser as a woman, even if you believe yourself not to be. And so you don't want to like upset somebody else when like they deeply violated you. And then you have to go through this whole, like it's beyond just fighting the good fight of something that is just like yours and right. It's learning so much about yourself and undoing a lot of unhealthy conditioning and thoughts that you had that will deeply benefit your business from forever from now. But like you had to go through this like nasty thing to get there, which is awful. But what you said, like just really resonates with me, especially as female like business owners. There's so much shit that I've had to face in my business. Um, Yeah, that you don't even expect. Like I never expected that I would be fighting for the trademark my business name. But you're like, hey, cool. You taught me that, like, oh, I should probably love what I've created more than other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, the and you get to have the cute little sexy R. Like, do you know the difference yeah. between the R with the circle and the TM? Because I don't. Oh, yeah. I spent so much time researching and, like, figuring out when I'm going to use which. So you can actually use the TM. And I'm not a lawyer, but <laughs> through all my research, you can use the TM after you have placed, like, the application. For the trademark, and then you can the art when it's efficient. Oh, dang! I didn't know that. Did you know that, Emily? I did not know that, but that's good to know. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the well, R is better. The R is like the level up from the TM. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, amazing. And did you put that on all over your website and everything yet? Yeah, I will be the first one to say, uh, as soon as I got that, I put it up there. And that was kind of like my mark. Like, I did this. It's mine. Um, 
And, you know, this is going out into the world. So a former employer, if you watch this, like, thank you for helping me be more in myself than I could have in the beginning. Yeah. Well, now you're never going to change your business name. Yeah. And now I don't have to. <laughs> and literally the whole reason I didn't want to and I fought it was like, I don't want to have to change this. Like, I don't want to have to change my bank account. I mean, it was it's a lot. Everything. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. Well, I'm, I'm proud of you for sticking up for yourself too. I mean, we've all had those instances in your business where you don't expect, like, I feel like we expect others to act in a way that we would act right. And not wrong. Like assholes. Yeah. Right. Right. But like people are sometimes assholes and, you know, people have their own reasons for doing that and we'll never know what they are, but I'll like what you said earlier is like, stay in your integrity and uh, stand up for yourself in a way that's like kind. And I, I mean, I had to go through something very not similar in, in a trademark or somebody, but somebody wronged me, like took money from me and did not deliver any services for a very long time. And I had to get pretty aggressive. And I mean, not mean, but I, I really had to stand up for myself and just say, hey, this is, this is not, not right. Like you have to make this right. So, I mean, I was really proud of myself for standing up for myself too. So that's just a lesson in like, being a woman, being a business owner, like boundaries and standing up for yourself and going after what's rightfully yours is very important. Yeah. We've talked a lot about this lately too. And I've had to remind myself of like, when you go into that place of, I, oh, I don't want to like upset them or I don't want to create more conflict. It's like, you came into my world and violated my feelings, my boundaries. And then here I am worried about you and yours. No, like that's where I get fired up in the positive way for me of like, who are you, whose side are you on? Because ultimately you're not on your own side, which is kind of wild when you think about it that way. How backwards is that, you know? Like I didn't want to show up on LinkedIn for years. I was like, oh, like, like something that was done to me made me feel like I was small and not worthy enough to to have my own say in my own. Right. But this happens in so many areas. And this is going to go off on a tangent, but so many areas of women's lives, like we get violated, we get like abused and we think it's our fault. Like it's so messed up. (laughs) It's so, it's so messed up. And something someone told me when, when I was going through my specific scenario, our friend was like, a man would not think twice about standing up for themselves in this situation. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's maybe true. Think, I mean, for me, I think of it kind of like a, it's a toxic relationship, right? Like the further away you're removed from the situation, you look back and you're like, oh, oh, that was really stupid. Like, and now I can stand strong and beat my own. So like, I am a million times better business owner, visionary for upkeeping because of what I like. And I can stand right. in my own place. And I have that identity to know of keeping his mind and I'm allowed to do with it what I want. Yeah. And right. And also you learned the lesson, like, even though it was a painful, hard, expensive lesson, you learned a lesson and you can go teach other people like, Hey, you should really file a trademark if you're concerned about this or, you know, like you can pass that knowledge on, which is, I mean, it makes it worth it, right? Maybe mm-hmm. that's community for you. That's women working together. Like, you just can feed off of each other's experiences, and that's why I appreciate like being on to the entrepreneurial journey, doing so many other things, and learn from each other. And I and I want to highlight like how you're talking about community. Like, you have become one of my business best friends. Like, I, and I know Whitney feels the same too. It's like it's. It's really cool to have each other as a community to really like learn from and grow and like use each other's services. And like you've been just so instrumental in just like not not only business help, right? Like financial bookkeeping stuff, but also like just have been a really strong friend to like lean on and like share things with. And like, I'm just very thankful that we have you in our community. So I just wanted to make sure to say that while we're on this call because publicly, because you're, you're really an incredible friend and an incredible human. 
Yeah, I feel the same. And I mean, three years ago, we didn't know each other at all. And now I, that, and that's the great thing too. Like even with Instagram and just meeting people, like I feel like Whitney, I met you just being like, hey, I need a co-working space. And we like talked a bunch before we even met in real life. And Emily, we met actually on the first podcast we did together. That was the first thing we met. And we've just been able to grow. And, you know, like you said, like these services, it's not even like using each other for services. It's like, no, hey, I need help. And I know I can come to Emily. I can trust you. Yeah, yeah, I can come to about this. This is really what it's all about. Yeah. And we're going on a trip to Florida next month. This weekend. That also speaks, Emily, to what you've said before of like, I feel bad asking our friends to give us money. And I've tried to reverse engineer that for you of, I would rather, of all the bookkeepers in the world, I would rather give Erin my money than anybody else because she's my friend and because I know her and trust her. So there's definitely like that level of we've built this community and that's kind of why for now we're like, we need to sunset the coast, at least in this way, in this capacity so that we can invest in our friends and have like maybe more intimate events together. But we have such this strong, amazing community with different ties to different people that it's time to really think of like, how can we grow that even further beyond this container? And Aaron's been such an instrumental part of that because I was joking with Jillian the other day. Jillian's the one who does social media management. Like Instagram and bookkeeping are very similar in the fact that most people think they suck at it and will just give you money to teach them how to do it or to do it for you or to have it done for them. And so we always like Aaron's just this poster child of like amazing friend, good at business and has your back on everything because I never would have even hired a bookkeeper if I hadn't known Aaron. I still don't have a bookkeeper. <laughs> but but, oh, but you, you have a financial man by your side. True. And also we both attended your workshop, which was like in- incredible. Yeah. And she's, I wanted you to get into Aaron, like how, I mean, I'm going to say it, you don't have to say it for yourself if you don't want to, but you're an incredible educator and you've been doing more with that and like built a college class. Yeah. I mean, that's part of the vision for upkeeping is just to make it understandable, which means like I have to be able to take really complex topics that are always changing and help business owners understand that. So Obviously, bookkeeping is one way, but not everyone can afford that bookkeeping services, or a lot of people are just getting started and they're like terrified of compliance and all that. So, having workshops helps them to get their their foot in the accounting world to just maybe I, I call it like financial therapy. It gives them like this sense of peace, like, okay, now I know at least the basics. And so, that was the workshop that I led last year was the basics. Like, this is a profit and loss thing. And this is a balance sheet. This is like the compliance you should worry about. And I just led a workshop last month or two months ago for CEO Society here in Seattle, where we went like even further into compliance and and also into some of the more complex expenses that you can deduct, like mileage and opt-ins. But I mean, the idea for me is always circled around education and community. And so I want to make sure like a key things impact can affect and empower as many people who I can reach. Working with the university uh, has been really great too because the accounting profession is old. It is old. People are retiring left and right. And so, you know, everyone has this conception of old, boring accountant. And it doesn't have to be that way. And, and the thing is, students also have that perception as well, not conception, perception. And I think those students need to see people like me who are living their life. I, I'm filled with joy. Like, I love, I genuinely love what I do. Like, I sit here at night, it could be midnight and I might be working. I'm like, I'll be good. And I want people to know, like, you can do accounting and still be happy. Yeah. You have demystified a lot for me. And as you're talking, like what I'm thinking about, because we're 
I've been working on my financial literacy and asking myself questions for the past couple of years of like, why have I like outsourced this? Why have I decided that I'm not smart at money when I probably got better grades in math? in most subjects except for calculus, which I dropped because I hated it because it doesn't apply to anything unless you're an engineer or similar anyway. I didn't like calculus either. Yeah. Yeah. I love stats. I thrived in stats. And then because it's like applicable to life. And then I went through my life and I was like, oh, I don't do that. I don't touch that. I don't like that. I don't get that. But that wasn't actually a story that I told myself. So I'm or that like was true, but I told myself and Now I've been undoing that and I created my money club to kind of for other women to come along with me. And what I love that you're doing in parallel is I bet you have a lot of clients and you can just generalize or do whatever you want with this question. But like, what's been your experience of working with female business owners versus male business owners like as clients? I love that question. You know, I was actually thinking about that earlier because I... 50-50 50-50 in my clientele. I 50% women, 50% men. And I feel like my Instagram audience is 99.9%. Yeah. Um, I think like so 0.1% is maybe my one male client. Awesome. But no, I work with female and male. And you know what? I have to say the, the there is not that big of a difference. And that is because I get to choose the clients that I work with. And the men that I work with are so respectful and deeply trusting in my abilities and my value that they're such a pleasure to work with. Yeah. And so I feel like I'm not going to go into a 10 or 15 minute conversation about some of the conversations I have with my female clients, but I I enjoy meeting because I just know that they trust and they respect me so much. Right. And the women, are they more like worried? Is there more baggage that they bring? Yes and no. Some of my clients, I would say, tie their finances to feelings of like worry and maybe more so. And I think that's just, you know, how we make guilt you know, as emotional being, they are more willing to share the truth and be honest and vulnerable about that. So I think that could be the difference. Yeah, that's cool. It's like your point about the financial therapy. I just imagine some people are like, you know, do I make enough money for Aaron to work with me? Do I, am I going to get in trouble? I don't know the rules. And So there might be some of that you have to sift through. Even for me in my business, I do a fair amount of therapy of like, you know, you're if you don't want to talk about your stuff on this marketing platform, you don't have to. Like there is no rule that says you have to be on Instagram. There is no rule that your website has to be interesting. I think it should be, but like it depends on your business and who your customer is. And if you're not ready to, you know, shout your sparklers, then maybe we're not the right fit, you know? And I find that a lot of female clients of mine are just so worried about taking up space that that's a lot of the work that I do with them. But also to your point, that's more of a coaching thing that they would have to do separately. The work that I would do on their behalf is more like you do have to know yourself. You do have to be ready to have a voice and to use it. Yeah. And I think it's just what we do in our monthly or quarterly meetings. It's just so empowering as it is. You know, you're looking at what you've done as a business owner, like the money that you brought in and the decisions you've made to make expenses with that money. And then you have to be able to see, you know, what, what that bottom line is and then make decisions that you get to make as a business owner. Yeah, that's super cool. And for them to have you as an advocate for them too and cheering them on is so important. Like you said, cheerleader. Yeah. And you don't make anybody feel like dumb for not knowing, which I appreciate. <laughs> yeah, it's also a mission for us. That happens too. So. Well, we, we met with Aaron for the coast. 
And we were like, uh, are we doing anything right? Because <laughs> we'd never, like, this is a completely different type of venture for either of us as like a joint thing. And what do we do? How do we do it? And we probably wouldn't have met with anybody if we didn't know Aaron because we would have been embarrassed. And that's the thing. I actually just put out a post today about like bookkeeping consult. What are they? And I feel like that's the number one thing that happens during the call is there's some form of embarrassment or shame brought into that from the business owner's side. And so I notice it time and time again, like they're afraid or like embarrassed to ask questions or to say, I haven't touched my books or I don't know what I'm doing. And if you're making gems or you're selling things on Shopify or you're writing, you know, for websites, you're probably not going to know everything there is to know about accounting. And it's okay to own that and to ask. Yeah. I love that you exist. And I'd love to hear about your experience. So like when you started upkeeping, were you intentional about like, I want to join these entrepreneurial groups for women. And that's how I'd like to grow my business, meet friends, et cetera. Because I know for me, because I started my business backwards, like I always say, I wasn't even thinking about any of that and like having any kind of marketing plan. I was just so in the work. And then I was like, oh shit, I feel isolated. Where are my friends? So I'm curious for you, like what that looks like. And you're more extroverted too, like how you decided how many to join (laughs) because everybody wants you. It, it's been a very happy, unintentional um, surprise for me because all I've ever wanted was to, I just want to be in a room with people talking and that gives me so much energy. I leave those events. Usually I leave those events like on fire and inspired. Sometimes I'll leave and I'll be like, that was a lot. But I mean, I'm so extroverted and I just love people. I, I attribute like all of us to others, to people that I met. But I just learn so much from others. And um, yeah, it's just really inspiring to be around some of the women that I've been able to be around. And so when I started, I think there was only like one networking group that was still in person at that time because it was still kind of comedy and then i joined an online virtual one that we talked about on and that's been great because even though it's virtual i started to actually meet a lot of the people in real life and i didn't realize how much of a marketing tool it would naturally be but now most of my clients are they come from referrals from whatever group that I've been a part of. And that's really nice because that shows me that people really trust. What I love hearing there too, and something that I encourage like with my clients is what you said of how you find people and how people find you as you establish yourself and think about what do I like doing and how would I like people to find me? A lot of like what Michelle and I had been doing in website church, for example, people would get all spun up about their SEO. Like, I guess there's this new messaging that you need 600 words on your homepage in order to rank for SEO. And that's not that if that's what you want, if you want that to be one of the main drivers of your business, great. Put your 600 words there. Try to not keyword stuff. Make it make sense. But for somebody like you and me, Erin, where I'm like, I'm so deeply, and I think community looks a little different because I get overwhelmed by big groups, but I love a VIP moment. So like, I'll come up to you at the co-working space or the smaller group things that you've hosted, I love. And that's what I try to do too. And bring people into my fold that way by building relationships and having your name in the right rooms. And that takes trial and error. But I find that a lot of business owners think, like kind of the tech bro stuff of like, you need this funnel and this thing. And maybe you do, but like check in with yourself first, because I think every business owner has gotten into the trap of like, oh my God, like, what do I do? How do I find people? How do they find me? And we can play and then find the right things for us. But knowing early on too, like, 
I just want to be in these rooms and not having high expectations necessarily or having high expectations and going hard on it. It's just a good way to think of like, what are the channels for me and what do I want my top drivers of business to be and then invest in those. And time is money. So it might not even be like spending a ton of marketing dollars to just go on like little coffee dates. We have plenty of things in town where it's just like, oh, we're in this Facebook group together. Let's get coffee. If that was my vibe, then I'd show up to that. Yeah. Well, you know, something you said, maybe like that. I walk into most rooms without an agenda other than just to meet people. And I think the amazing thing that comes from that is not clients, but opportunity. Like opportunity. Genuine. Yeah. Is, yeah. Genuine connection, but opportunities to also like get into other rooms and get into like opportunities to continue sharing um, to other business owners. And so just the opportunities that come, even if it's like working with Michelle White for like a, a Hispanic Women Heritage Month photo shoot, which was so fun. And that never would have happened because I wasn't in that room, you know? Yep. Shout out former podcast guests as well. Mm -hmm. That's what I didn't know when I first started my business, I guess, like how to show up at networking events. Cause you're just like, okay, I'm going to go get clients. Like you're just so excited as a new, like you just don't know, but that's like walking into a room. If you're looking for like a date and be like, who wants to bang? Like, (laughs) it's just just weird, you know? (laughs) And for some people, I need dinner first. Right. Exactly. It's, it's, I've said it all the time, like marketing is like dating. You have to get someone to like fall in love with you before they take you home. Right. Like it's absolutely, it's just so many, so many things we don't know when we start. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's your threshold right now? So you're at about 40 clients. Would you continue? Like, it's kind of like a chicken and egg thing. You're going to add to your team to potentially take on more clients or would you say like I'm capping it I know for Emily and she's a given she's like I only want 50 assistants total that's how or at least that's what you had been saying last year so what yeah, do you we're think- open to more now <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that right now in your business Erin like do you yeah, want more clients a, and more team it's such a battle it's such a battle going back and forth between like growing responsibly and then also scaling and like knowing the potential for what upkeeping can be. So for me, you know, we brought on an intern earlier this year and she has happily accepted a role after her internship. And so we'll grow that way. And then, you know, I think it's about looking to the immediate future. And so like for me, all right, Come fall, I'm going to bring out another intern and see where that takes us and just continue those baby steps to keep it growing. Because growing responsibly means for me, like, I want to make sure all my current clients know that they are still supported and taken care of and I don't want them to get left behind. So I have to have the capacity myself and but also the capacity of my team. For sure. Everyone that we have and will. Yeah, I was thinking about that with regard to, so like we did this forecasting, what did you call it? Project. Yeah, we did the projection thing, which I wasn't planning to attend. (laughs) And then I like got the last, last minute seat because you're like, there's still one available. And I was like, whatever, I could probably use this information. But I had had like a bunch of meetings that day or whatever and was like, I don't know. And then just walked into the room and I was so excited to learn from you like I was meant to be there and I've been filling out my grid very religiously and watching my numbers and I had like part of what we did was we all shared our goals in there too and because of that I had so a couple years ago when I started my money work I like they there's a lot of language around at least in the service provider world of like 10k months that's what everybody's striving for in their first couple years and I had always been pretty consistent even from the beginning of my business for the most part getting 10k months and then I was like why stop there like I had to do a lot of undoing and like 10k is not really that much especially with expenses and then like 
at the beginning of that work, like during my first like money course that I bought, I was like, okay, I'm going to double it. I'm going to be 20 K months. But then I realized that that was, I didn't have a plan. Like you still have to have like kind of inspired action, they say in the manifestation world. So then I would be bummed out for the next two years of like, I can't get to my 20 K months. And again, it's just me and two assistants basically in my business. Not to say that I couldn't do 20K or whatever. There was a lot of undoing. But what your stuff really helped me with was like, I had a plan to get to those 20K months and that's what I just did. So I had a, I and I, I like when people do this, I had a gross 20K month. My net was a little bit below that. My next goal is a, a net 20K month, which I have to have smaller steps. That's what I realized in that process of like, you can't just go and 200% your income. I mean, you can, but I wasn't in a place mentally where I was ready to receive that. And I didn't have the mechanisms in place to make it happen. But part of what you did, like my world with the spiritual woo stuff and your world with like the actual actions, part of what we had on that grid was like, okay, what are the scenarios that we can play with here? Is it raising my prices to get me where I want to be? Is it this, that, or the other thing? And it makes it more sustainable and helps you check in with yourself, question, and make a plan. So I love, like, I think what you're doing is going to be so helpful for so many people because it just really forces you to look inward and make a plan that feels good and is supported by that community that you created to these small little containers of like, nine or 10 other people who are there like holding that space for me. And I believe in that too. Yeah. And, you know, we're meeting in a couple of days to go over Q1. I just sent the email out this morning and, and what you said is like, so true. We need to have like a starting point with our data. So that way we can look at it and then realize, is this really where we want to be? Or do can we do more? Can we 200% like you said, but what does it look like to do that? Like you have to be intentional and make choices to get to where you want to be. And so looking, having first the data to look at your starting point so that you can like realistically make a goal for what, where you want to be is like the number one step. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And it also like allowed me to open more portal, be open more portals and be open to more portals. Like I think to your point of being the leader and having people support you, it creates the space for you to like, let's say I wanted to 200% again, I'm going to 40K next month. If I'm able to like have more time for my brain to work on solving that like problem quotes, I'm using air quotes because it's not really a problem. Like, but for my subconscious to work on getting there, then the downloads will come. The ideas will come. I'll be in the rooms with people who have done other things where I'm like, oh, I could do that and make money that way. So it's been really cool to be in that energy with you of like, here's everyone's starting point. Now we're making plans and we're open to like how they're going to come together while also like being as unrealistic or realistic as we want to be or we're capable of being in this moment. Yeah. Which I think requires a lot of mindset work. That's why I keep going back to it because I know that like, Emily talks a lot about like, she's really good at mindset work and like part of her childhood really informed like where she wants to be. And same for me too, where I'm like, I never saw my parents making 10 K months until like the end of my dad's career. And then I thought that's all I can be. And so part of the work that you do, that's like very actionable and numbers based and tangible is questioning that a little bit too, of like, why do I think that 10k months is my north star like that's not getting me to the level of wealth that i want to like serve the world in the way that i want to so what can it look like for me next and then after that and after that and after that and the check-ins the accountability is really important too so the fact that you're having us on that zoom is really important yeah and it just gives us a time to be like open and honest and share about the highs and the lows because we will experience it all. Yeah, you were in that room, Emily. I sure was. Yeah. I walked in. I didn't know who was going to be there. I was like, hey. (laughs) It was all my 
all my buddies. So it was cool. It was a safe place. I agree. And it was really great. And I admire like how confident you are when you are teaching. Like I aspire to be like that. And calm. Oh, you got it. You got the taco acronym. I remember it from last year. If I can remember <laughs> your talks, you're you're on the right track. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Thank you so much for, you know, coming on the show again and, you know, blessing everybody with your presence. And I know that sounds so silly, but it's true. Like we're we're happy that you're able to share your message and like continue with sharing your evolution of the business and like your tidbits and like we're so excited to be in your presence and to know you we have one final question one rapid fire which is what are you proudest of in your business right now proudest of a lot i think supporting my team is growing and you know i think the the proudest thing for me is when i had that conversation with my intern you know, hey, we're a couple of months out from your internship ending. And I just wanted to throw this out there. You know, we can be interested in continue working for us. And she stated she was so honored. Yeah, that is. And snaps to you. My husband was making fun of me the other day when I was doing snaps. It's a sorority thing. I love a snap. It's quieter than a clap. But really, like, underlining that the fact that somebody wants to stay with you and grow with you is and invest in you too is just such a beautiful thing. So thank you for creating this safe space for numbers <laughs> and money for all of us. Oh, and yeah. And just existing in the world and being in the same pickup line <laughs> for our kids yeah. after school. <laughs> Guys, for what we do. Any final questions, Emily? No, I just love you. <laughs> Yeah, and follow them on their trip to Florida. Hopefully, you guys will be posting. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, we um, will. This May. May 4th. Yeah, I'm super pumped. And we're, yes, it's going to be great. I feel like all the big conventions are in Florida. It's always oh, it's wild. I've never been to Florida. It's going to be my first time. I just flew back from there the other night. Jacksonville, baby. Very nice airport. I hadn't been to that My Florida airport just yet. was here and flew back to Jacksonville. That's funny. You guys. Yeah. We were rerouted on our way home from spring break by Ross. And it's a very nice, easy, navigatable airport, unlike the Atlanta airport, which we did not. I mean, I've well, been there a million times. Yeah, I don't. Like it. Forever. Planes, trains, and automobiles, for sure. So we weren't really trying to go back there. And it was a five hour drive from where we were. So <laughs> Rose was like, let's go to Jacksonville and have a stop. And, you know, it worked out the way it was meant to. But uh, you guys are going to Orlando? Yep. I Orlando. just guessed that off the top of my head. Maybe my subconscious had seen it before, but like everything's in Orlando. Everything so. <laughs> is, yeah. They have like probably the most conventions. Maybe between them and Vegas. Yeah. Well, thank you, Erin, for all you do. And everyone hire Erin. She's open to more clients. That's what I was trying to mine for. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. And check us out on next week's episode of The Coast. We'll have several interviews coming and then a few little in-betweeners like we've been doing and get to our 100 episodes. So thank you, Erin, for capping off this amazing project and being back. Bye. Bye.